Howdy. Good news network. New rooftop CO2 ventilators funnel fumes into fertilizer that makes spinach grow four times bigger in roof gardens. New carbon dioxide ventilators could turn fumes into fertilizer to bring vegetable patches to high-rise rooftops, suggests new study. It wasn't suggested the study included an experiment that found spinach by the new air vents grew four times larger than the other plants. The breakthrough is a promising development for healthier city life, says scientists. And here we have a commercial, obviously. UPM Bioforce Beyond Fossils. And there's a dragon. But anyway, scientists at Boston University created new technology that turned carbon dioxide CO2 pumped from building air vents into fertilizer for improved the challenging plant growing conditions for rooftop plant life. Rooftop vegetable gardens, big ones even, can be found in cities around the world, but they're mostly hydroponic system, receiving nutrients and water via a special mist challenge, challenge, channeled through tubes. Rooftop farms and gardens are often suggested as ways to improve air quality, but conditions are difficult. Plants are often small and less healthy because the sites catch more solar radiation, wind exposure, and the soil is less moist. Moist. The researchers decided to intercede by repurposing the CO2 emitted from building exhaust into a fertilizer. Dr. Sarah Beth Buckley, now at the University of Cambridge, began growing corn and spinach on the Boston University campus roof in an experiment named Big Grow. We wanted to test whether there is an untapped resource inside buildings that could be used to make plants grow larger on, in rooftop farms, she said. Creating more favorable conditions that increase growth could help make rooftop farms more successful and therefore more viable co options for installation on buildings. Dr. Buckley and her team choose corn and spinach because they are common edible plants that are more sensitive to high CO2 levels when they photosynthesize versus other plants. Yes, I have been talking about this. They then place the plants near the exhaust winds and another control group near simple fans. CO2 levels in the classroom below were regularly measured to figure out how much extra CO2 the plants were receiving. High concentrations were found both inside classrooms and at rooftop exhaust winds when people were in the building. CO2 levels averaged above 1000 parts per million, the recommended limit in classrooms, and above 800 parts per million, high enough to increase growth of the plants at the rooftop exhaust vents. While growing, plants were monitored for size, number of leaves and wet and dry biomass after harvest. The results were striking. Spinach grow, grown beside the exhaust vents had four times the biomass of spinach grown next to a control fan. High winds decreased the size advantage in some plants, but they were still twice as large as the controls. Dr. Buckley cautioned, there was still more work to be done before the system can be used. There are still many aspects of this system that must be determined before it can be implemented, she said. There is a decrease in growth with increased with wind speed, so the optimal wind speed would need to be found and incorporated into the system design. We are hoping this could lead to the further development of this system and eventual implementation in rooftop gardens and farms. If that happens, then hopefully more rooftop farms will be installed. They could provide a multitude of environmental and social benefits, such as energy savings for the buildings, carbon drawdown, climate mitigation, urban heat reduction, local food production, community building opportunities, and aesthetic and mental health benefits. So, they were feeding CO2 to the plants and they grew immensely bigger. Check it out. CO2 makes plants grow.
Maybe. Many have to rethink the whole CO2 thing once again. If you reduce it, plants will be smaller. If you give them more, they will be bigger. So, make up your own mind. That's just one chart. There are many of these kinds of charts. Time before present, billions of years. CO2 went down, 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 down. And now it's making its way up a bit. But back in the days, we had dinosaurs. They were very, very big. They had to eat a lot of food. So I think the plants were also much bigger. And not only has been the gravitational pull of Earth different back in the days, but also the bigger amount of CO2 made it possible for things to grow bigger, such as plants. And they probably functioned the same way. They were filtering the air and they provided food. There is an upcoming food crisis, but we are still trying to get the CO2 down. And then are wondering, then we are wondering why there isn't crude food growing. Why is it so less? Why is it so small? Some other people feed CO2 to the plants and they figure out they get four times bigger. Oh, check it out. Don't believe me? That's whatever page I just found about that. Valve's community, your update to Heroes Group. Carbon dioxide for tulips from Amsterdam. Flowers in greenhouses grow better with more CO2. It is a fertilizer after all. It is necessary for the plants to grow. So, if we put it even more down, which is not really possible in a way, the plants will grow smaller. There will be less food. Now, how is this possible that we have such a contradiction? There's a food crisis and in other places They know that CO2 is very important for plants. I don't eat really meat. I stopped a few years ago. But if you meet, if you eat meat, then your friend, the animal, what you are going to eat, had to eat some plant before it turned into meat. So just think again about CO2, CO2 taxes and all that stuff. But anyway, I leave it here. It's just baffling. Thanks. Bye.